if you look at everything under law, I feel like Sean did a real good job at kind of answering, answering a lot of what we thought might have been issues. And so what I'm just saying is to, to wean this initiative down and we could provide support in the manner of using our website for some of those relevant things that have happened. Sean told us that chokeholds have been banned according to the ACLIA accreditation and our police force is ACLIA accredited. So just keeping people aware of the changes that are being made, I think is very helpful. So it's like building the, community relations on the Okay, with it, no, I think we need to do is say, well, then one of our initiatives that we want to get to the mayor is that we will have a community outreach program so that information like what was presented to the HRC could potentially be presented on a annual basis or whatever they think is to the to the general community. Is that what you're saying? Yes, but I think she's saying through Facebook. But but if there's a way for us to go broader than that, great. Okay. Yeah, I don't I, I just want to start to so that we're, we're still ciphering down. Yeah. down so we can get yes. some stuff to the mayor by the end of the year. Because I just know the council agenda and the council will want to look at this at the start of 2021 going forward. So, uh, so basically what you're saying is that we should have a, a, a uh, basically something on the HRC website relevant to uh, issues that have been answered or uh, responded to by the police as well as a community involved policing approach including some sort of open forum to discuss the issues of policing on an annual basis yes yeah exactly okay. the, you know i i'd just like to add the, the other thing that i took away from that meeting um is that it seems that there's um, a very wide gap in information from the citizen to the officers with respect to a traffic stop, with respect to resisting arrest. And I think that's something that we could very easily change. From, from, from the meeting and discussions with Sean, it, it would seem that we should try to somehow um, help our city, I think we should start here, with the driver's education. Within the driver's education courses, it would be nice if we could um, have a video made from the police department that tells kids how to interact with the police officer. And when we had asked them to go through it, it was very informative, very eye-opening, but no one knows that unless you're a cop. So if you're a kid, I think, that just so the children know when they're starting to drive or, or even adults for the cop safety and for your safety, here's how you should respond to a traffic stop. Because nowhere have I ever learned that other than what you see on TV, which is right. And so I think that from an initiative, I, I think some, some place that we can make significant impact is by trying to adopt some some type of law that allows the citizens of Troy that go through the driver's training to at least watch a video that explains from a police officer standpoint how they approach a traffic stop and what the expectation is because we we talked about where to put your hands don't move quickly we, we talked about why they bring a person out of the vehicle even if there's more than one person in the car if it's you know if it's nighttime and the the average person has no idea that the cop is doing that for their safety the, the the citizens think that the cop is being aggressive and so then you have things that will escalate so my my proposal my uh, hope is that we could look at trying to work with our state state work um, our state representatives to come up with a plan to introduce a bill that would allow um at, at least the people in Ohio to take a class with a small video that allows us to safely understand a police officer's standpoint so that we can have 
a better yield of safety for our citizens. Marvin, I love that. And I, and that's kind of what I was thinking for the first initiative, right? Locally, like just providing whatever relevant education via the relevant methods of communication, Facebook, you know, our online source, so yeah. I think that makes sense. It's kind of an extension of the beginning one. How can we support the police through education, through being that two-way? I think that's very relevant. So if if we, you know, hear, whoa, state is big, then I, I think we still cultivate that locally and provide that on our, our webpage in conjunction with the support of the police. I think that's great. I think that's a good thing. Okay, so I because I missed Thursday. I had a huge trial Friday and I apologize, but I totally won. So if we look at one A through Q, does anyone care if I pull this down? I'm six feet away from no, everybody. It's just I'm I'll stand further away. It's just We're hard fine. to talk through it. Yeah. So uh I, I guess A is no longer you've got the answers to most of these questions. Is that no, right? No, no we, we didn't get the answers to all of them. No. Okay. So what are we, I guess, and I'm not, I just don't have a lot of time today, but here's what I, so here's what I have down is. So we're looking at F, community involvement programs. Right. And we're so thinking about using our, our web, our, our website ability that we're working on for HRC to kind of be that hub for the police with so, G, the policing practices. Okay. So let me, let a lot me of people, go ahead. Yeah, that's fine, Sonia. So here's what I wrote down on, on potential issues to give to the mayor. We want to do a video. I think that's wonderful. The police to do on how to interact with the police. We want to also reach out with that and see if there's possibility to make that state law for part of your driver's license uh, criteria. But we definitely want the police or the city to produce a video on how to interact with law enforcement going forward. Yes. Is that fair? Yes. Okay. Yes. Then we want basically some sort of, whether it's through a Facebook page or something, and I just wrote down rules and regulations backslash myth busters, which is basically just sort of, yeah, hey, great. here's here's what the rules are. There's lots of, uh, I mean, it happens in my profession all the time, right? Uh, well, so-and-so told me this. Well, okay, but that's just two people talking at a bar. That's not the law. Right. So let's let's work on trying to get rules and regulations, some sort of myth, myth lesson. We want a community outreach program, whether that involves community policing, on foot policing, um, some sort of uh, annual or biannual meeting where people can come and uh, meet with us, uh, meet with the police. Uh, and then I still like the Citizens Review Board. I don't know how the rest yes. of the city, yes. out, but I thought the Citizens Review Board on any sorts of discipline was, I know the law, the lawyers do that. And I thought that that was something that, that we should look at. Right. So, and then Marvin has an initiative. The document that, that you have in your hand there, that hopefully is to go before Mayor Oda this yes okay and so that we can look at adding a city ordinance that would serve as a um, basis for protecting the 12 classes uh, that are typically discriminated against so that that kind of goes into that okay perfect i didn't mean hey, to Todd, you know, can i ask you a legal question real quick um is a hate crime is sexual orientation considered a hate crime here or in state of Ohio, do you know offhand? I have no idea. Okay, I'm a sidebar. I heard it wasn't considered, so that would have been something relevant to push if it's not true. I'll look it up. But I think as well, these are the initiatives. This is it, this is all we can I think that you summed that up very great. Um, I, I think that's what we're looking at. I think that really um, completes the policing section. I, I would like to have Sean back to finish. He said he had four sheets of paper that he was going through, and he only got through one. Five. He had five. Oh, he had five. And so he. Yeah, Marvin, he there's a whole paper. class. Sorry, there's a whole class that um, we actually could take, and that's really what he's training us on. 
I think he should come back, but I do think in the future we should look at putting ourselves through the course. Yep. And so if you would find that information and share it, um, I, I would absolutely support that. We all should do that. Certainly. Okay. I, I think that's all why we're here to try to work better with our police officers. So then, items, sorry, go ahead. I, I was just going to say that the, the items that we didn't get to talk about, um, we didn't get to talk about I, um, we didn't get to talk about M, we talked on N, we talked on O, we, we didn't get to touch on P. <clears throat> So those would be the good follow-ups. Do we need to send that to him? Yes, and we, we also didn't get to touch on D. And E is gonna be covered by the document that I just gave everyone. Well, actually, no, it's not. So it's we called a Citizens it. Police Academy. I think they're doing that. that that's, yeah. Yeah, that's something that happens here. That would be beneficial for, for us to go through or and or the civil service board. Like whoever's going to oversee or be on a civilian board should definitely take that class. I can't answer your question, but there's a... State and police department order for hate and bias crime reporting that addresses uh, sexual orientation and transgender complaints. Uh, I don't know if Troy's adopted anything similar to that, but that's, uh, I can forward this. Yeah, I heard that um, that has actually been an issue for citizens not being able to prove hate crimes because it's not considered one. So I, I thought that was pretty interesting. So the sheriff's department does the citizens police academy. Okay. I sent that to Marvin because he's the first one that popped up. So we can take a look at a document, something like that, about reporting and uh, having some issues like that. Okay. So. The, okay. the ones that you just enumerated, are we looking to get responses to those to the mayor before the end of the year as well? Uh, do you want to get, okay, so yes. So our thought process then is Sonia will set, submit, or Salome, somebody will submit the answers to these, and then we either have the police officers come back in or we'll get a written response so we can incorporate right. those into our final initiative. Yes. Yeah. Awesome. So moving on to initiative two, am I correct? The election process. So again, you know, we're not going to make anything this year, but moving forward to next year, I still really love supporting the communication and push of felons knowing, you know, they have the right to vote. A lot of this comes down to education, you know, <laughs> between the community and the. Perhaps getting a box in um, some of the under resourced areas that don't have the voting sites. I think you're eight through up or five. I mean, some of them we're not, I don't know how, I mean, some of them are just. Uh, 
hopeful in nature, for lack of a better term. Like, I don't know how we're going to be able to make free return ballots. That's going to have to be a something yeah. through, through the postal service that allows you to do that. But I don't, I mean, if you, I don't mind saying that these are things that we would like to see, you know, access to the ballot is, is, you know, in fairness and hindsight, we're coming out of a voting season. So if we were to prioritize, we could come back to this at a later date when we're closer to another big election time, because we do have the community team to consolidate with this. And I mean, I think we just did some pretty big initiatives with law. I think there are some in here that you could start working on. I mean, I think the expansion of ballot boxes, if they're permitted, That's uh, would be something that, that's extremely important. I think uh, the communication to 17 year olds, uh, what, what did you say here? In regards to felon voting, domestic violence, ESL, 17 year olds and overall voting eligibility. Again, this, these are board of elections. They're not necessarily things the city could do, but I don't have a problem with us coming out and saying these are some initiatives that we would like to see um, you know, performed on a, on a countywide basis through the board of elections. I mean, the best what if we do A, E, and F as a, a, a recommendation to Mayor Oda to recommend to the voting board? I think those are good. B or D? E, right. Um, A, E, like egg, and F. A, oh, thank you. I think that narrows those three down. I think that narrows that down to something reasonable. I, I think the thing that we also heard, I, I think during the meeting when, when Ann came and presented, he said that they really needed help, um, you know, with, with the, I, I guess, with the overall process. So um, I, I don't want to add anything to our plate here, but would think that um, we could maybe help and be the bridge to bring more people into the voting process, especially people that have been discriminated against in the past. I think this would be a great way to allow people to help out, learn the process, get other people involved. You mean as poll workers? As or? poll workers. Yeah, I think yes. that's I think that's a great initiative for us. And we would that they to see okay. to the community yeah. to you know remind them of poll working and yep. and you know try to get volunteers to mm -hmm. i mean that's legitimately a serious problem i mean it is. if you follow this year's election at all that's getting poll workers has been a problem for them right so so maybe i guess through, through the manual that you put together todd we can get in touch with like churches and maybe just start there i i think that I would be say I, yeah some of this stuff I guess I'm, I'm still trying to, to divide what what's our responsibility and what do we even have the ability to influence being a committee, uh, a choice city. So this is county. I think we can we can certainly from this committee, we can make suggestions. I don't know how much further I'm having a hard time how much we don't have any kind of, of uh, authority authority that's the word authority and I just think we have to balance that really careful yeah that, that how do we how do we but, how, but we would have a little bit John I, I think I think from when this was formulated and when you go back and look at the even the that first directives as to, to what our roles are I, I, I think we can, even if we're not, we can't direct, we can't say border of elections, this is what you need to do. Right, no right, about right. That. But I think it, I think we can say that as an HRC, one of the things that we want to look at is making sure that uh, the entire community is represented as poll workers. Right. And as part of that, through our, through the C run HRC website, Facebook page, whatever it is that we disseminate information to poll to prospective poll workers to say, hey, get a hold of the Board of Elections. 
we need people in Troy 3C. We need people in Troy uh, 2A, whatever. Right. I think that is is what, I don't want to on Martin's toes. That's, that's exactly how what I'm I saying. Okay. Okay. Yes. what okay. he was trying to say. Okay. Let's, let's okay. use our resources as having an information dissemination channel right. to say, hey, let's get some poll workers in here, let's, uh, it, it, here's how you go about doing that. And I think the same, we would use the same for things that, like I was really surprised about the multilingual balance. I mean, I, mm -hmm. I you know, I, I'm, I don't know, it just, it, to me, that would be something that's just common sense that we would have ballots in Spanish and Japanese and, you, you know, because right. we have such, large community. I mean, we heard about the Japanese school. So mm -hmm. I think we would want to make sure that we let people know that if you're capable and able to vote, that you have these ballots available for you. Right. And, um, that's, that's, and that we would make, you know, areas that we would have access to available for, for ballot boxes. If they wanted to put one in the city hall where you pay your, um, water bills yeah, exactly. if we wanted to you know that's where i think we could could yeah. be of assistance so that's true i agree yeah. with you i don't think we can I, I don't think in any stretch of the imagination do we have any authority to say this is what we want i think what we can say is mayor these are the recommendations that after seven months with, of meeting here or whatever it's been that we these are the things that we want to narrow down which is why i'm I mean, I'm not trying to manip manipulate everybody's time. I hope everyone has, has no. time to think about all this stuff. Mm -hmm. But I, and that's why I think we need to start, because I really do think as a council member, it, I mean, I'm kind of wearing two hats here because I know what council is going to be looking for and what we're, right. what we're trying to accomplish. And, and even if we don't get it all done, I think it's really imperative that we start to pare that down. And, you know, six weeks from now, we're in a position that we can say, here's what we want to submit so by that december meeting that's a, a very easy task. easy to go to exactly here here's yeah. what we'd like to submit everybody vote what do you guys think and, right. and that's you know this is sort of the making sausage aspect of it and then mm -hmm. i think once it's it's compiled and solomite kurtz or sonia whoever's writing this stuff puts their magic touches on it mm -hmm. we can we can submit it. So I, so I, I think those are, are all great. And, and I, but I would add, um, what, what Marvin and John said, uh, Sonia or Solomon, whoever's drafting. So I think we're looking at A, E, F, and in addition of communicating, uh, the necessity of poll workers and encouraging minorities and others, um, to, uh, to apply for those positions. Okay. I say, gotcha. Is that what you're thinking, Marvin? Yes. Yes, sir. Perfect. So it's pretty much just to build capacity and make sure in ensuring diversity in those settings. Okay. And, and so fair the, enough. The question is um, from how, you know, I, I guess, how do we communicate with people about voting, um, about the ability to become a poll worker? So I think we need budgets or are there mailers that the city does that we can write up something I think on? I'm talking to Patrick. I think that Go ahead. I think that makes sense. But I think for the sake of this meeting, we got to get through the community side agenda to have it all mushed down. So then we can come and fine tooth comb how we're going to execute it. Okay. Yeah. If, if that's fair to say. To answer your question succinctly, I do think that the city understands that there may be a budget. I don't know what that number is. Yeah. I don't think it's going to be, you know, hundreds of thousands of dollars. But if we need, you know, five thousand dollars to put together a Facebook page and those sorts of things, or we we have an in-house IT person who may be able to do that for the city. But okay. I do think that there was some understanding that there may be some expenditures of funds yeah. here that are are reasonable. And I think you met with the mayor and talked yeah. about that earlier. Yeah. My suggestion will be to ask Ian, what they're already doing because he said that they are doing outreach and marketing regarding um voting and uh, poll workers so yeah. 
Yeah. Maybe we we need more details from Maybe, him, yes, and then to figure out how we can um, yeah. help. Okay, that, that's a great idea. I, I know that he had mentioned in that meeting that they he did. desperately yes. needed coworkers. Yes, help. and he did yeah. that. They do. They do have marketing. They do. They reach out. They are trying to get more pool workers. Yeah. I think first we need to know what they are already doing, and then to find out what how can we help. Good suggestion. Okay, so I, I we okay with Ben on that. Sorry, I'm just trying to get <laughs> get it done before 6:50. I apologize. So, um, moving on. Let's see. We just went over the budget, so we don't need to do that again. Now we're to the community emission initiatives. The first one is social service structures, effort outreach. I like the community events or maybe it's assisting diverse community events such as, you know, the, the festival of nations, maybe it's not creating our own, but how do we help support the ones that already exist? Did I go too fast? I just was not on this committee before, so I'm trying to catch up. Sonny. I apologize. Oh, gotcha. No worries. You're fine. Miss Phillips reached out to committee of Festival of Nations, and um, if she was here, she would update you on that. But so, if I remember correctly, they told her they would appreciate your assistance, and I think the committee was. I think they met a week ago or they were supposed to meet either one week ago or two weeks ago, but I do not know if they provided additional information to Ms. Phillips, but I'm sure she'll have some updates for you for the next meeting. I think, isn't it, is it Montgomery County that does something like the cookout? They basically they're having celebrating their own culture, celebrating diversity might be something that we've never, uh, thought about doing and then we could have um you know the lincoln center and different organizations come and we could share history and and do storytelling do like a, a couple of these initiatives and in, in an actual event I would, yeah i think that's a good idea yeah i, I would like to do an event I, I guess it would just be difficult to plan with COVID, right? Are, are, are we still at a place where we can't have more than 50 people in a room? I think so. Yeah, I, I don't know. That's, I know we're not supposed to have concerts and we had some and we had to social distance and all that. Um, you, you guys may know this. I, I don't know, but there's, I'm going to pull this down again. I'm sorry. It's 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 talk. Um, oh, uh, Sydney Weeks grandma what was her Lois Davies and um who's uh Lucille Lucille Wheat actually wrote a play called I just got it for my birthday uh self-evident truths or something like that oh, from 1957 and it was performed off Broadway if we could reach out to like Detroit Civic Theater um and see if they would be interested in, in gathering that play or putting on that play. That might be something that would uh, be kind of cool for. Uh, Very relevant to today, isn't it? it, it, it <laughs> I agree. I see this yeah. as our role is looking at community events and just ensuring diversity. So we talked about this, like making recommendation for Proudy Plaza or Treasure Island. Um, just again, ensuring their there's diversity there and then doing, you know, maybe an event or two of our own. Seems to make sense to me. What do you guys think? It makes sense to yeah. me. I agree. I'm going to see if I can, I actually have this book. I just, my birthday was just at the end of the last September. Is it so where they're talking back and forth to each other, the two ladies? Yeah. Have you read it? Yeah, yeah, definitely. You can find that um, if you're interested at the Troy Historical Library as well. It yeah, is down right. there. That's, that's really right. kind of a great segue to initiative two, 
it started at least for me as street buildings, names and, and statues. And Salome has passed out kind of a rough proposal. It's not going to look as nice as Marvin's, but um, the more I just started like looking at our history, I thought, wow, you know, there's a lot of people, um, Troy historical society. We have, the Overfield Museum, we have the Troy Museum, the Veterans Museum, the Waco. We have all these different historical places, but as we notice, we don't have a lot of historical plaques, monuments, um, just even recognizing things that are going on in Troy. So that proposal is a very rough proposal, but maybe kind of being that that bridge to bring everybody together so we can start working on those things. I know um, Marvin and I received an email from a concerned citizen in regards to the downtown building and how that was part of the Randolph slaves. You know, uh, we talked about Nineveh, free people, million, a bunch of times since we've been at HRC and knowing that it's not acknowledged. Um, you know, we can't save million dollar broken down buildings, but we can preserve history and or give a platform to start catching history as it's being made um, today as well. I propose that, that to me, that that is something that I think inner groups and community, it makes sense to get around, especially as the history is dissipating and it's almost not in existence. I, I know only from city council in the past, they were very reluctant, and this was before I was even on council, but they were very reluctant to get into the naming business just for a bunch of various and sundry reasons. I don't know if you recall, but there was some discussion at one point in time to name something after someone I can't remember. And, and the mayor at that time was, was very anti naming stuff after somebody for I don't know. Whatever. Right. That's why it made sense to me to yeah. just preserve the history where it is. You know, even if that building falls downtown, why isn't there a plaque or something monumenting the fact that, you know, the, the freed Rossfield slaves were there? Things like that. So, again, this is kind of morphed into kind of a history preservation of sorts or challenging that our history has not been preserved and not just it's also women and minorities and other diversity on uh, poverty history that needs to be preserved. So what, so, so what do you suggest that we do here? Well, I suggest we take a, a couple, I think we work with a uh, Shane at the Lincoln center. Um, that's one of the first places and kind of the norms of our city where our history has been held. Um, he, he's building a beautiful new building now, and, and there's talks that there's going to be history within the hallways. Um, I think we start there, but I also think we reach out to the, the other partners. And because our history doesn't just belong in the Lincoln Center, it should be throughout the town and acknowledge where the history was made. I think holding history in one place kind of makes me feel like maybe that's where I'm supposed to be. But if it's through our town, I think it it also creates this narrative of how diverse groups work together. Um, there's a lot of places you take Barbell Atkins Education Center, um, just having a plaque out to monument the fact that whites and blacks work together via the Underground Railroad, via giving land to an immigrant who then turned it into a abuse shelter. There's, there's just a lot of history here. We tend to lean towards sports history and cultivate and capture and kind of make it in our culture more than we're cultivating. Like there's an African-American man that's on Dateline. There is a white uh, woman who was on the Endeavor, I think three times from Troy High School. So again, just if we're talking about a culture shift and inclusion, I He's think we just repeat. Say it again. I said the Endeavor lady has a statue, right? I, I don't know. Does she? I think so. And maybe it's a, a fact of communicating it. Maybe it's just communicating it. I asked high school kids and they were like, we don't know what you're talking about. So I think it's, if we have it, that's great. So how do we promote it? So you, And again, I don't. 
Which, which is an interesting concept, Sonia, because it's legitimately right in front of the Senior Citizen Center. You're talking about Nancy Curry or Kit, whatever it is. Yeah. Oh, I didn't know that. That's awesome. There's and a one, lot of kids don't know that. Yeah, so they're walking past it and they don't know it. There's one for Hartzell, one for Bruckner, and one for the lady who was the astronaut. And I, I think her name was Curry. You know, that is her name. You're yeah. right. And I think those are all right out in front of the, the, um, the have, senior I, center. And I think an, a group called like the Aviation Hall of Fame or something paid for that. It, it wasn't designed for any, I mean, it was, it was for the aviation history. So I agree. I look, I, I love history. I, I think it's, it's what we should do. And if there's ways we can, you know, commemorate that i think we absolutely should do that i'm just not not understanding the plan here though if you, i don't you think we have that. a full plan yet i think we have okay. to talk to the history people okay. that are on the list i don't have it i apologize i've been at home and so i haven't been at access to my office so i don't have that proposal in front of me but it should have the Troy historical society all the parts and pieces basically that would preserve or deal with history within our town. I'm, I'm just trying to figure out like, like what would you like us to work on trying to make sure- So the happens. Nineveh, we'd like to have the Nineveh free people acknowledged. We'd like to have, like we talked about this in the beginning, um, a plaques and histories of Slab Town in Hollywood, possibly talking about um, Richard's Chapel and how it was funded and made with the relationship of Mr. Hobart and Mr. Um, Asul and then helping the Lincoln Center. And maybe they have better, clear direction because they are the historians in truth um, of how we can best preserve our history and culture within Troy and also to educate people in regards to that diversity. So yeah, I don't think again, I don't I don't have it all for sure. It was more of let me bring what I have to the table and see what people thought. It's just been sparking up a lot, like a lot of history that's, you know, either going to be demolished or has been kind of underlooked and so you know, it's just it's been a hot topic. Can can I make a suggestion? Yeah. Um I I think Remember when we had a meeting here? I don't remember which meeting it was, but but Sue was outside and and we, we had talked afterwards and she had mentioned that there was nothing in Troy that really gave a historical account of of Troy. And so I think that what what you're saying is really great. Maybe there's a way for us to um, talk to people and get them on video, maybe or or at least on on recorded version of something so that we can preserve it through a system that way where, where it's accessible through at least our public library maybe. Um, I, I think that that would be a way that we could really underwrite it fairly inexpensively and just start the process of pre, pre preserving the information that we still have access to today. So is that something that would be helpful you think or were you looking at something different? No, no, honestly, I'm like pretty open to however, I mean, you know, thought of kids walking up to a kiosk and entering their name. And if they had Troy history, it would come up and, and that's a pie in the sky, long shot dream. But that would be really cool to get young people engaged in history, that, especially you know, that, culture. That, that's not really a pie in the sky. I, that, that's, that's very simple. That, that's basically a kiosk with the LCD screen that you can touch and talk about points in history in Troy. I think that's very achievable, very cheap to do. Like it will be under $2,000. Well, um, I think that, that is really what our community needs and especially our youth. And it would be an awesome platform to get on the level of the school and even talking about diversity and changing the, the culture. The there's, some, there's some discussions about some things that I, We'll know a lot more about tomorrow that we can make able to talk about some okay. of this stuff and and, and having okay. So maybe places. we just leave it like this for now and, and we can come back to honing honing that out because yeah. you guys got better ideas than me. 
So here, here's yeah, just to, to uh, synthesize a little bit what I think you're at, Sonia. So basically from the community outreach, we're looking at perhaps some sort of historical marker system. We're looking yes. at cultural events with a minority or ethnic um, influence, uh, the concerts downtown the, the or Treasure Island, something like that which is what we talked about at the last meeting, I was able to attend to have some sort of, of event like that. Yep. Perhaps, and this is this is purely me, but perhaps looking at some self-evidence truth or some sort of uh, historic play uh, being performed at the Troy Civic Theater that perhaps we would get behind and, and maybe even, I don't know if you have to fund those or what, but we would, we would basically be the, uh, the underwriters for that for that play at the Troy Civic Theater. And rather it's, again, I was trying to find the book and I found it on Google, but if there's a better play that, you know, people think it would be more appropriate, but, but put on some sort of play or event at Troy Civic Theater, or maybe a concert at Hobart, something like that, that we would, that HRC would underline. Work, yes. uh, work, work perhaps with the Hainer, because I know they do a lot of these plays about a uh, uh, history of African and uh, an African American history uh, to be displayed uh, throughout the community, perhaps with Tom Kennedy and, and I said, Pat Kennedy, with Pat Kennedy from the uh, Historical Society and um, maybe Shane or actually some of the the older members. Yeah, Shane at the Center for his uh, museum, his tribute, his history piece he's doing. Right. So, so maybe he can get some something through there, and then some sort of long-term history connection uh, through a, a kiosk, um, some sort of history. And, and I put down that that would either be at the Lincoln Center or perhaps okay. at if if we do some things downtown that would welcome people into the community. Oh, that's we could do something there. That's a great idea. Create a walking history tour with, uh, yeah. with, codes, with codes where you take your phone and... Oh, that's, you, you can do things like that. that. Yeah. Yeah. It's really smart. Yeah. It, it's, yeah, it's, I was kind of thinking great. like, like the Holocaust Museum in Washington, how you get a passport, you know, but what if it was your own history? How cool would that be? Okay, yeah, is thanks. that for community? How much time do I have? Oh, you don't have 20 more minutes. 50. 20 more minutes. 50. So we have a initiative three. It says increased awareness about HRC. Oh, no, I don't okay. want anybody to know more about me than they already know. <laughs> <laughs> Honestly, I feel like by doing these initiatives, it does increase the awareness of us. Um, If we I have big community event and kiosks and you know all those things that kind of I think this is really good stuff I think this is great you want me to I keep three as three is Marvin or oh I'm sorry I, I didn't know what was going on. sorry I didn't hear you oh you're fine um, no I just needed to know about three what is three the budget awareness um, about HR. This is the initiative when we when you discussed the flyer mm -hmm. and uh, uh, posting on social media and sharing information on social media. So when, when Lauren will come on uh, communications coordinator, when she comes to the next commission meeting, you can talk um, about this with her. So table until Lauren, is it Lauren Karsh? Yes, and she's been working on the flyer too. Yeah. Yes, I, I think if we, we want to kind of push it down to an initiative, at least I think that we could um, at least say that we should be posting something from the HRC um, once every two weeks. So maybe at least two posts on social media a month. I think that would be a something that we could do. Sure, if you have something in mind you you want to share on the website. Right. On the social media, you could always you know, reach out. No. no, but you can use the city's 
Facebook page. That, that's what we do for other commissions too. When we have to, and your meetings are always posted on social media, like mm -hmm. for like other meetings. But will we will we have a specific Facebook no. page that would be under the city one? No. Is, is, is that not possible? Um, is that questions for? I think we already meeting? discussed that on one of the meetings, and that was no, the answer. No. That well, no, you could no, util no. utilize the, the city's website, right. social. But, but not if I think if if we could have our own. I do not. I remember uh, that we have to use the city's that social media. That's what I remember. Yes, but you okay. could also ask that question again. But that's. I think yeah. I'm um, let me ask you. Ask this committee a question. Do you? I mean, where are you guys with with communication to the city? Do you want me to say that we're working and we should have something by the end of the year? Do you want me to just stay silent? I've been. Staying silent, so it's up to you guys. Gotcha. But I'm gonna. I think the end of the year is fine. Okay, so I'll, maybe today at City Council, I'll say, "Hey, we're HRC is working hard, just to give you guys an update. We've narrowed down to three or four initiative or three or four areas of initiatives that we plan to present to the City Council by the end of the year." Yes. That's I, I think. The, right? I mean, if you wanted to mention some of these initiatives that we discussed today, I think that would be okay. Okay, that's up to yeah. you. That's, that's yeah, that's fine. Okay. Sorry, Sonia, I gotta go. Oh no, no, you're fine. No worries, you're fine. Primarily so I what am. I Marvin? Primarily because I, I have to take dinner. I'm diabetic, and if I don't get a payday, at least I'm gonna be uh, falling asleep at city council. There you go. I, got, I actually have a good old night. Have a good night, Todd. Good night, guys. Thank Thanks, you. Everybody. All right. So then we'll that, this will conclude our meeting because we are no longer a quorum, which is okay. You have a good night. Everything else, um, in your opinion, guys, they could be just tabled to move on. Number five, you actually, I think that's what you gave out your proposal, your clear and firm guidelines, correct? Yeah. Okay. So then I'll just say meeting was adjourned at 641. And can you please on the minutes... Um Put the time when uh, Todd joined and we started the meeting because I think my recording started a couple minutes later. Excuse me. Yes. Okay. Can you just please, um, yeah, indicate the time when we started meeting. It was after five thirty. It was around six yeah. o'clock. Just so to make I mean, sure if, we if have it. Also add um, the budget. We had already talked about the budget, and um, so I'll send you a note once I go back to my office and get my prior notes about the budget requirement. Gotcha. Okay. And then the only thing we didn't do was the new meeting date and time. Right. That'd be the only thing we need. And I got to grab my planner real quick. Sorry, I thought it was next to me. Looks like um, we would be. We want to keep meeting on Mondays. Todd will be on the committee meetings at six o'clock next Monday and then November. Do you want to schedule in two weeks or three weeks? I think two. Two um, weeks. Should we pull it away from a Monday so we don't have to so he doesn't have to feel like he'll he has have to a, leave? He'll have a, a council meeting on November second. So if you would like to change the date, not the date, um uh, day or yeah. we do Tuesday. I can do the fourth. Sonia can do Tuesdays, correct? Yeah, I can't do Tuesdays. You remember that? You remember that? <laughs> Actually, yeah. Right now, I can <laughs> because I had something canceled. So if you want to do the third, I actually can do the third for right now. All right, let's. John, does that work for you, sir? Yep, that works. All right. Okay, and we're going to do five. Can we do 530? Uh, election, I think six would be. Day, but I'm I assuming think, everybody will vote it by then. Oh, that, that's, is that election day? Yeah. Um, um, so Todd let, said that the working it. working hours are from nine to six for him, so probably okay. that he cannot really come before six o'clock. So maybe six is better. You mind if we, okay. we move it to Wednesday? Wednesday. I, I, I really don't don't want to be here. Mr. On Keller day. cannot come on Wednesday. Oh, you can't. Wednesday do does work. now. If we move it out one week, Monday, Tuesday. Let's see here. I can do Wednesday if you want the fourth. Is that good? John can't do Wednesday. 
Oh, I'm sorry. I I can hear half. I apologize. Sorry about that. I could I could do no. Tuesday or Wednesday the following week. Monday, Tuesday, or Wednesday the following week. I can do Monday the night the ninth. Is that another city council meeting? No, let me check. The first week of the month. It's before. committee meeting, and uh, Todd will be at the committee meeting at five, from five to seven. What committee meeting? Uh, city council oh, committee city meetings. Council. Okay. So we can do the tenth then, if we're all good on the tenth. Did you say you're good on the tenth, Sonia? Um, that's what I'm trying to look. Actually, no, I'm back to class. I can't do Tuesdays anymore. So Wednesday. it would have to be a Wednesday. Okay, let's just set it as tentatively the 11th for Wednesday, and then if someone needs to change it, that's fine. But uh, Sonia, you're available on a third, right? Only uh, uh, yeah, November yeah. Third, Tuesday on November 3rd. So if you want to have a meeting at six o'clock on on, the, on that day, if you are available, you can still meet on Tuesday. So when when, when is the election day? That's, that's third. Tuesday the third. Yeah, I, I don't want to be here on the third. Oh, okay. Yeah. So maybe we could do, I mean, I'm, I'm open the fifth. Is that good for anybody? That's a Thursday. Get back. Um, I can do that, actually. Okay. Talking about November 5th? November 5th. Uh, let's get out of there. Did that work for everybody? Hold on. You got an old man oh. that doesn't know how to work his phone. No worries. November 5th. That's my okay. phone. Okay. So then we will do the 5th, November 5th. Okay. 6 p.m. to 7 30. Six PM the fifth. Yeah. Okay. Yes, ma'am. Perfect. So remind me what our next meeting is, please, for Education um, and Employment Committee meetings. Uh committee meeting is on Wednesday at six o'clock at a senior center. The fourth. Sorry, I'm no the next uh, next meeting for education and employment committees is uh, this upcoming Wednesday, twenty first. Okay six o'clock and i sent the packets today i emailed all of you the packet i saw that at 4 30. yeah i got it i saw it i just needed to get it in the calendar awesome thank you all right we are adjourned 6 47. bye take care sonia thank you sonia bye everybody